Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and in this video I'd like to briefly discuss a wild mushroom whose reputation seems to be somewhat on the rocks these days, especially when it comes to its edibility. So what do I mean by that? Well, this mushroom is often listed in field guides as edible, and this mushroom is often collected by hungry mushroom enthusiasts during the colder months of the year. However, several websites and people claim that this mushroom may actually be carcinogenic. It should probably not be consumed due to these cancer-causing compounds found within its fruiting bodies. Now the mushroom in question is a small oyster-like mushroom that grows on wood and it's known by many common names including the late fall oyster, the late oyster, olive oysterling, and by its Japanese name Mukitake. Its Latin name is Sarcomyxis serotina, though you also see the name Pinellus serotinus being used to describe this mushroom. And serotina refers to its late fruiting habit because you'll typically find this mushroom fruiting in colder weather, usually during the autumn months through winter. Now even though the word oyster is used in its name, the late fall oyster isn't in the same genus as true oyster mushrooms. True oyster mushrooms are in the genus Pleurotus. Also, the late fall oyster is actually not even in the same family of mushrooms as true oyster mushrooms. So the late fall oyster is in the family Mycenaceae, while true oysters are in the family Pleurotaceae. And as I already mentioned, the late fall oyster mushroom is listed as edible in many field guides. However, several websites issue the warning that this mushroom may contain carcinogenic or cancer-causing compounds. It sounds confusing, and I know many people are confused by this because all you have to do is visit an online mushroom identification forum or check out a Facebook mushroom identification group, and it seems that anytime somebody posts a picture of the late fall oyster mushroom, you have some people claiming that this mushroom is edible. You have others saying, I don't know, I heard this mushroom contains carcinogenic compounds. We probably shouldn't be eating it. And over the years, I've been receiving numerous emails asking for my thoughts on this matter because in the past, I've recommended this mushroom as a species that can be eaten. So what are my current thoughts on this particular issue? Well, follow me and we'll continue the discussion. So here's a fallen log full of late fall oyster mushrooms. You can see a small cluster right here. And I'm holding a cluster in my hand. This is Sarcomyxa serotina. Does this mushroom contain carcinogens? Should we avoid eating it due to potential concerns regarding its toxicity? Well, to get some answers, I didn't just look into the issue. I decided to dive into the issue because that's just the kind of person that I am. And anytime I would read about the late fall oyster mushroom containing carcinogens, the particular warning on the website or in the Facebook group would always mention research conducted by this German mycologist who supposedly originally made these claims based on his studies. But the website or the comments claiming that this mushroom contains carcinogens would never actually link up to the study. Instead, all I would read was this, research conducted by a German mycologist found carcinogens in the late fall oyster mushroom and no actual link to the study. So I tried to find this purported study showing that this mushroom contains carcinogens. And I tried really hard, believe me. And all I could find was the exact opposite, that this mushroom contains compounds that demonstrate anti-tumor properties, antioxidant properties, and anti-carcinogenic properties. But not once did I find a study suggesting that the late fall oyster actually contains carcinogens. So what did I decide to do then? Well, I found the email address of the German mycologist who's referenced on these websites and in these forums, and I decided to email him directly. And I asked him, can you please tell me more about the carcinogenic properties associated with this mushroom? Or perhaps point me towards some research. I'd really like to learn more about this. And so I waited a day, I waited a few more days, hoping that he would respond. I waited some more, and one evening he did respond. And I was excited because now I finally have some answers. And here's what he said. It has been proven in the meantime that Sarcomyxa serotina contains neither poisonous nor carcinogenic ingredients and is therefore no longer seen as poisonous but classified as edible. So there you have it, straight from the source. Sarcomyxa serotina contains neither poisonous nor carcinogenic ingredients and is therefore no longer seen as poisonous but classified as edible. And that's the power of asking questions. You receive powerful answers. And sometimes it's all you need to do is ask. 
instead of taking things at face value, instead of believing and then repeating claims that we often read about but can't necessarily validate, just ask. Ask around, try to get to the source, see what answers you come up with. And even if you don't get a hard answer like yes or no, which is often the case, at least you'll probably still learn a tremendous amount of new information in the process. So to me, what it seems like with the late fall oyster mushroom is this. It seems that perhaps there was maybe some initial reason to believe that the late fall oyster mushroom contained carcinogenic compounds, but no evidence to support this claim was ever found. So for now, the late fall oyster continues to be edible just like it always was. Now I just want to provide some concluding thoughts on carcinogens because having said all that I just said, I should probably point out that the late fall oyster mushroom might actually contain carcinogens. Now wait a second. Didn't I just state that the late fall oyster mushroom does not contain carcinogens and wasn't as validated by the source, the German mycologist himself? Well, yes, however, carcinogens are ubiquitous. And I'm not just talking about synthetically created carcinogens, but naturally derived carcinogens. You know, many myco and phytochemicals in isolation can act as carcinogens, but in many cases, it's all in the dose. So it's very likely that at least one chemical found within the late fall oyster mushroom's chemical arsenal, when extracted and administered, let's say to an animal, because that's what researchers like to use these days, at extremely high doses, it's likely that this compound can demonstrate signs of carcinogenicity. And it's likely because it's been shown to be the case many times with chemicals isolated from plants. That whenever you extract certain chemicals and inject them into rodents at extremely high doses, bad things can happen, including cancerous states. So why wouldn't this also be true for mushrooms, including the late fall oyster mushroom? I mean, even common spices like basil and sage and thyme contain phytochemicals that, when isolated, can induce cancerous states in rodents at extremely high doses. So technically, we could consider those chemicals to be carcinogenic. But the good news is this. None of that's realistic. You're not likely to harm yourself with those particular foods because, number one, you're receiving such small quantities of those chemicals, usually in the parts per million, and number two, you're also receiving anti-carcinogenic compounds at the same time that are naturally present in those spices and in those foods that counteract any potential toxicity. And hopefully, at the same time, you're maintaining a healthy diet. You're moving, you're exercising, you're loving, you're doing what makes you happy, you're living a life of meaning. You're essentially doing the work that's necessary to support a healthy body that's less likely to be ravaged by disease. And in the specific case of the late fall oyster mushroom, remember, this species has been found to contain bioactive compounds, including beta-glucans, sterols, and terpenoids that demonstrate anti-tumor properties, antioxidant properties, and anti-carcinogenic properties, despite claims to the contrary. So I think that's all that needs to be said right now and I hope this helps to clear up some confusion regarding the purported carcinogenic properties associated with the late fall oyster mushroom. It's a beautiful mushroom, an ecologically important mushroom. It's a mushroom you're likely to encounter during the coldest months of the year, but it's a mushroom you really shouldn't fear. So thanks so much for watching this video. As always, I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed it and you're not subscribed to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. You can also head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter. You can follow me on social media, at Learn Your Land on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again, happy mushroom hunting.